the other day, I was sitting at a red light. There were two lanes of traffic. I was in the left-hand one. There were no other cars stopped at the red light. And I noticed in my rear view mirror, this car coming along in the lane to the right of me. And it crossed my mind that he was going a little too fast to stop for the red light. And sure enough, he just breezed right on through the red light, didn't slow down at all. It was a busy intersection. And I'm so grateful that at the moment the driver went through the intersection, no cars were coming in the other direction. It seems like everybody I know has a bad driving story these days. I bet you have one too. What's going on with all the bad drivers? Hi there, this is Carolyn Pitts with Intendwell. I'm an A-certified health coach, intuitive energy healer, and visual artist. And every week I post content with health and wellness tips to help you live an intentional life and be your best self. You can keep up with my content by going to intendwell.us and entering your email address. Every Friday, I'll send you links to all the content that I've posted for the week, plus bonus content just for people who are on my email list. It's not just anecdotal. All this bad driving that's happening, it's real. The National Safety Council reported that between January and April of 2023, the number of motor vehicle fatalities is 5% higher than it was in 2022. And it was even higher in 2021 when everyone was so stressed out over COVID, which is why I think the bad driving is happening. It's not that everybody's suddenly forgotten how to do it. It's not that suddenly people don't care about their safety and welfare or the safety and welfare of others. It's stress. Stress is at an all-time high. The American Psychological Association posted a report in 2022, and the people that they surveyed for the report, 27% reported that they were too stressed to function on some days. They couldn't think straight. They couldn't make decisions. And the Kaiser Family Foundation posted a survey in February of this year, 2023, 30% of Americans reported stress symptoms. Now, if you've seen my video on the biology of stress, you know there are some profound chemical, hormonal, biological changes that happen in our body when we're under stress. And those changes seem to be directly related to the behaviors that we're seeing when people are on the road these days. You probably know that one of the first things that happens when we are triggered and we go into fight, flight, or freeze mode is adrenaline courses through our bloodstream. It's a natural biological function of our human survival instinct. That adrenaline prepares us to either fight against the threat or run away from the threat. But in our modern society, when we don't have a way to fight or flight against the things that are stressing us out, like the economy, like a pandemic, like labor shortages, all that adrenaline just stays in our bloodstream. And over time, it builds up and we start to feel jittery. We start to feel this sense of urgency. We may not even realize where it's coming from. But if you're feeling jittery and urgent and just in a rush all the time from all that adrenaline in your bloodstream, what's going to happen when you get behind the wheel of a vehicle? I think your right foot's going to get a little heavy and I think you're probably going to drive faster than you should. You're just feeling urgent, like you just need to get there. And maybe you don't even realize why, but you're speeding down the road when you really don't need to be. Another thing that happens when we're triggered is our vision narrows. We develop tunnel vision. We focus in on the perceived threat. Again, part of our human instinct. If something is threatening you, 
you need to be paying absolute attention to it, not kind of looking around and seeing what else is going on in the environment. No, laser focused on whatever that perceived threat is. And you know from driving school, when you're driving safely, what do they tell you? Don't just look at the road ahead. Check your rear view mirror, check, check your side view mirrors, look around, see what threats might be coming your way. That driver that breezed past me at the stoplight, I bet they didn't even register that there was a stoplight, that the stoplight was red, or that there was a car already stopped at the light. They were so focused on where they were going and the road ahead, they just breezed right on through the intersection. And finally, another thing that happens when we're triggered is the way our brain functions. When we evolved, when the human brain evolved, there's an early part of our brain, it's called the hind brain or the limbic system that's reflex oriented because there was a time in evolution and we see it in the animal kingdom today. Beings that just react to whatever is happening around them. They don't think about it. They don't reason through, they just react. Over time, the human brain developed a prefrontal cortex. This is where we do our executive functioning. This is where we do our problem solving. This is where we can weigh options and we can apply reasoning and logic. But when we're in stress mode, that part of our brain goes on standby and we are operating from the reflex part of our brain. So again, you know from driving school, you're supposed to be looking around and anticipating what could be happening, what could come out in front of you. You're looking down the road, you see a stoplight, you're thinking about your rate of speed, you're calculating your stopping distance. Those are executive functions that are not fully online when we're living in a place of stress. So what do we do about it? Well, I've got a couple solutions. You've heard me talk about this before. I think it's really important to have a daily breath practice. When we breathe long, slow, and deep, we send the all clear signal to our autonomic nervous system. We tell it it's okay to stop ringing the alarm bells. We are safe, everything's clear. So practicing breathing appropriately on a regular basis will help you tap into that sense of calm when you're feeling triggered. And it just leads to you feeling calmer all through the day. Even if you're not aware that you're stressed, a daily breath practice is just such a wonderful self-care thing to do. And it only takes a couple of minutes. I've got a whole bunch of videos on my YouTube channel with different breathing techniques. You can play around with those, have fun, put some time on your calendar, two minutes, four minutes a day, and just focus on your breathing. And another thing I would suggest, again, I've talked about this before. If you've seen my video, what's your superpower? I give you a demonstration of heart rate variability biofeedback training or HRV biofeedback training. There's a lot of devices out there. You can just spend a couple minutes a day. I do 15, but you could do less. Practicing putting your heart into coherence. Um, in the video, I show you a particular device that you can get. Um, if you're an email subscriber, you got a second video with uh, details about the app that I personally use on a daily basis, but there are a lot of apps out there. And your HRV biofeedback training includes breathing. So two, two birds, one stone, right? The second reason I think that we're seeing so much bad driving out there right now is again, stress, but stress from other people. I've talked about this before. We are energetic beings and we have an electrical, magnetic, bioenergy field that emanates from our body. And we are always broadcasting out into the field around us, our thoughts and our emotions. You know this, 
you know you can be around someone that you know well and you know how they're feeling and you know what they're thinking just because you're picking up on those signals. So if 30% of us are walking around so stressed that we can barely function, that stress is being broadcast to all of us. So even if you don't have a reason to feel stressed, you're picking up on the stress of others. Have you ever had that experience where all of a sudden you felt a little anxious and you didn't know why? It could be because the person who just walked past you on the street or walked past you in the grocery store was feeling so stressed and they were broadcasting that out and some of it got into your field. Okay, so what do we do to protect ourselves from stress that's emanating from all the people around us? First thing, this is going to sound weird to some of you, it's going to sound woo-woo, but it works and hey, it's free and there's no side effects, so why not the heck just try it? Before you go into a situation where you're going to be around other people, whether it's going to work, going to school, going shopping, take a moment, practice your breathing, and imagine that you are in a bubble a very protective bubble. Raise your shields like they used to do on the Star Trek Enterprise. Put your shields up, set the intention that you are not going to take in any stress that is being broadcast by the people around you. See yourself going over to your little radio and turning it off. You know, when you turn off the radio, things are still being broadcast in the air, you're just not listening to it. And the second thing, and this is fun, it works, but it might sound woo, but it's fun. Get yourself a crystal. Crystals have a vibration. They have an energy. And carrying a crystal, either wearing it around your neck or your wrist or just carrying it in your pocket will remind you to energetically shield yourself. There are crystals that have specific frequencies for protection and for deflecting unwanted energy. If you want to give this a try, I highly recommend that you find a reputable crystal shop in your area. Don't order your crystal online. You need to pick it up and hold it. You need to see how it feels in contact with your body. And then when you get the crystal home, you need to cleanse it appropriately and you need to charge it appropriately. And I'm not going to go into that on this video because there's tons of information out there that tell you how to do that. I will give you a word of warning though, and that is that learning about crystals can be a slippery slope into a really fun hobby. The more calm, cool, and collected you are on a daily basis, the better your driving will be, and the more resilient you will be to the bad driving of others. And when you see one of those drivers that is speeding down the road, weaving in and out of traffic, cutting you off, you can emanate some of your calmness to them because obviously they need it. Thanks so much for listening. Appreciate you stopping by. Have a beautiful week. Remember the best things in life are intentional, so intend well.